Norwegian Literature, Wikipedia Article Audio Norwegian Literature Medieval Poetry Medieval Prose 400 Years of Darkness Rebirth National Romantic Period Transition to Realism Emigration Literature Modernism in Norway The 20th Century The Post-War Period Political Awareness and Social Realism Beyond Social Realism Notes By Category, Norwegian Language, List of Writers Writers, Novelists, Playwrights, Poets, Essayists Novel, Poetry, Plays Science Fiction Literary Theory, Critics, Literary Prizes Ibsen, Vassas, Homsen, Collett, Jernson, Wergland, Dag Solstad, John Foss, Sigrid Unset. Norwegian literature is literature composed in Norway or by Norwegian people. The history of Norwegian literature starts with the pagan Eddike poems and skaldic verse of the 9th and 10th centuries with poets such as Bragi Bodison and Evindra Skaldaspalur. The arrival of Christianity around the year 1000 brought Norway into contact with European medieval learning, hagiography, and history writing. Merged with native oral tradition and Icelandic influence, this was to flower into an active period of literature production in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. Major works of that period include Historia Norwegi, Thidrex Saga, and Kanung Skugsha. The period from the 14th century to the 19th is considered a dark age in the nation's literature though Norwegian-born writers such as Petter Klossenfries and Ludwig Hallberg contributed to the common literature of Denmark-Norway. With the advent of nationalism and the struggle for independence in the early 19th century, a new period of national literature emerged. In a flood of nationalistic romanticism, the Great Four emerged, Henrik Ibsen, Jernst Jern Jernson, Alexander Kiel Land, and Jonas Lai. The dramatist Henrik Wergland was the most influential author of the period while the later works of Henrik Ibsen were to earn Norway a key place in Western European literature. Modernist literature was introduced to Norway through the literature of Nut Homsen and Sigjern Obstfelder in the 1890s. In the 1930s Emil Boysen, Gunnar Larsen, Håkon Bugmart, Rolf Stinnerson, and Edith Berg were among the Norwegian authors who experimented with prose modernism. The literature in the first years after the Second World War was characterized by a long series of documentary reports from people who had been in German custody, or who had participated in the resistance efforts during the occupation. In the 20th century notable Norwegian writers include the two Nobel Prize-winning authors, Nut Homsen and Sigrid Unset. The period after 1965 represented a sharp expansion of market for Norwegian fiction and the 1970s produced both politicization and empowerment of Norwegian authors. The 1980s has been labeled the fantasy decade in Norwegian literature. The earliest preserved examples of Old Norse literature are the Eddic poems, the oldest of which may have been composed in early 9th century Norway drawing on the common Germanic tradition of alliterative verse. In the 9th century the first instances of skaldic poetry also appear with the skalds Bragi Bodison, JLFR of Havinir and the court poets of Harald Fairhair. This tradition continued through the 10th century with the major Norwegian poet being Evindra Skaldaspalur. By the late 10th century the tradition of skaldic verse had increasingly moved to Iceland and Norwegian rulers such as Eirik Rahakanarsen and St.
Olaf employed mostly Icelandic poets. In pagan times the runic alphabet was the only one used in Norway. The preserved inscriptions from that time are mostly short memorial dedications or magical formulas. One of the longest inscriptions is that on the 8th century Ejim stone, containing cryptic religious or magical allusions. Around the years 1000 to 1030, Christianity became established in Norway, bringing with it the Latin alphabet. The oldest preserved Norwegian prose works are from the mid-12th century, the earliest are Latin hagiographical and historical texts such as Passio Olevi, Acta Sanctorum Insilio, Historia Norwegi, and Historia de Antiquitate Regum Norwegiensium. At the end of the 12th century, historical writing expanded to the vernacular with Agrip A.F. Norig's Conan Gassigum followed by the legendary saga of St. Olaf and Fagraskina. Medieval Norwegian literature is closely tied with medieval Icelandic literature and considered together as Old Norse literature. The greatest Norse author of the 13th century was the Icelander Snorri Sturluson. He recorded Norse mythology in the form of the Prose Edda, a book of poetic language providing an important understanding of Norse culture prior to Christianity. He was also the author of the Heimskringla, a detailed history of the Norwegian kings that begins in the legendary Inglinga saga and continues to document much of early Norwegian history. The period of common Old Norse literature continued up through the 13th century with Norwegian contributions such as Thidrek's saga and Kanung's Skugsha but by the 14th century saga writing was no longer cultivated in Norway and Icelandic literature became increasingly isolated. Norwegian literature was virtually non-existent during the period of the Scandinavian Union and the subsequent Dano-Norwegian Union. Ibsen characterized this period as 400 years of darkness. During the period of union with Denmark, Danish replaced Norwegian. The university and cultural center of Denmark-Norway was Copenhagen, where young men went to study. The Reformation was imposed on Norway in 1537 and the Dano-Norwegian rulers used it to also impose Danish culture. This was effected through the pulpit as well as through written records, as pastors were trained in Copenhagen. Thus, written Norwegian became closely related to Danish, causing the literature to become essentially Danish. Gebel Petersen was the first Lutheran bishop of Bergen and a man of broad humanistic views, his adopted son, Absalon Petersen Bayer followed in his footsteps as a humanist and a nationalist, writing an important historical work, concerning the Kingdom of Norway. Petter Klossenfries was also a humanist who both revived the Heimskringla by translating it into the language of the period and wrote the first natural history of Norway as well as an important topographic study of Norway. The 17th century was a period of meagre literary activity in Norway, but there were significant contributions. Petter Das wrote Nordland's Trumpet which described in graphic verse the landscape, mode of life, conditions, and character of the northern Norwegian people. Two other authors merit mention. Dorothy and Gelbret's daughter was Norway's first recognized woman author who wrote powerful religious poetry. Her first work, Sjælens Sang Offer, was published in 1678. Tare Offer was her second collected works and was published for the first time in 1685. Another gifted poet was Anders Aribo who translated the Psalms into Norwegian and composed the creation poem, Hexa Emeron. Norway also contributed significantly to the joint literature of Denmark-Norway. One of the very first names in Danish literature, Petter Klossenfries, was Norwegian-born. <laughs>
Other important Norwegian by birth Danish authors of the period included Ludvig Holberg, Christian Tullin, and Johann Hermann Wessel. Two major events precipitated a major resurgence in Norwegian literature. In 1811, a Norwegian university was established in Christiania. Seized by the spirit of revolution following the American and French revolutions, as well as bridling as a result of the forced separation from Denmark and subordination to Sweden subsequent to the Napoleonic Wars, Norwegians signed their first constitution in 1814. Virtually immediately, the cultural backwater that was Norway brought forth a series of strong authors recognized first in Scandinavia, and then worldwide. Henrik Wergland is generally recognized as the father of a new Norwegian literature. The enthusiastic nationalism of Wergland and his young following brought conflict with the establishment, which was unwilling to accept everything as good, simply because it was Norwegian. This period also saw a collection of Norwegian folk tales by Peter Asp Jernson and Bishop Jergen Mo. This collection, which paralleled those by the brothers Grimm in Germany and Hans Christian Andersen in Denmark, captured an important overview of the folk culture of the mountains and fjords. At least as important in the creation of a Norwegian literature was the effort to introduce a pure Norwegian language, based on the dialects spoken in the areas more isolated from capital. The terror of Ivar Asen was at the heart of this effort. Asen, a self-taught linguistic scholar and philologist, documented a written grammar and dictionary for the spoken Norwegian folk language, which became Nynorsk the speech of the country as opposed to the official language largely imported from Denmark. Nynorsk is one of the two official written norms of the Norwegian language to this day. By the late 19th century, in a flood of nationalistic romanticism, the great four emerged, Henrik Ibsen, Jernst Jern Jernsen, Alexander Kiel Land, and Jonas Lie. A unity of purpose pervades the whole period, creation of a national culture based on the almost forgotten and certainly neglected past, as well as celebration of the Bond Kultur or Norwegian farm culture. The realism of Kiel Land gave way to the romantic and nationalistic spirit which swept Europe and rekindled the Norwegian interest in their glorious Viking past, the struggles of the Middle Ages, peasant stories, and the wonders of myths and folks' tales of the mountains and the sea. Although a strong contributor to early Norwegian Romanticism, Henrik Ibsen is perhaps best known as an influential Norwegian playwright who was largely responsible for the popularity of modern realistic drama in Europe, with plays like The Wild Duck and A Doll's House. In this, he built on a theme first evident in Norway with plays like Jernsen's and Follett. Although a side note to the mainstream of Norwegian literature, the literature which documents the experience of Norwegian emigrants to America is as important as the Norwegian immigrants became to the growing America of the 19th century. Three authors are recognized in this genre, O. L. E. Rolvag wrote about immigrants, while Johann Boeyer and Ingeborg Rifling-Hagen wrote about emigrants. O. L. E. Rolvag, who immigrated to America, experienced life in the prairies, and rose to become professor of Norwegian at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota, provided a strong record of the joys and pains of the immigrant in adapting to the harsh realities of and carving out a new life in a wild new country. Norwegian author Johan Boeyer provided a mirror image, depicting the struggles and processes which led to the decisions to emigrate. Ingeborg Riefling Hagen having two brothers and a sister in the United States contemplated the emigrants' longing for home and their harsh struggle over there in a known collection of emigrant poems from 1935.
Modernist literature was introduced to Norway through the literature of Nut Homsen and Sigbjörn Obstfelder in the 1890s. In the 1930s, Emil Boysen, Gunnar Larsen, Håkon Bugmart, Rolf Stinnerson, and Edith Berg were among the Norwegian authors who experimented with prose modernism. The books of the 1930s did not receive the same recognition as modernist works after the war. In 1947, Tarji Ivasas published a poetry collection, Like an Ogli Ne, that led to major debate about the shape and rhythm for Norwegian poetry. This evolved further in the 1950s. Rolf Jacobsen achieved recognition as a poet of modernistic style after the war. Christopher Updal was also recognized for his work. After the death of the Great Four and Amelie Scram, a new period of Norwegian literature took place. The year 1905, when Norway was free from the union with Sweden, marks a new period in the history of Norwegian literature. In the 20th century, three Norwegian novelists won the Nobel Prize in Literature. The first was Bjernst Jern Bjernsen, whose prize reflected work of the previous century. The second was awarded to Nut Homsen for the idealistic novel Markens GRD in 1920. The third was Sigrid Unset for the trilogy of Kristen Lavrens Datter and the two books of Olaf Odonsen, in 1927. Nut Homsen was especially criticized because of his sympathy for Nas Jonal Samling, a Norwegian Nazi party, during the Second World War. Other important Norwegian writers include, Trig of Gulbrandsen, Jens Bjernebo, Agner Mikkel, Olaf Duhun, Cora Sandel, K. Jarden Flogstad, Arne Garberg, Axel Sandy Mose, Tarji Ivasas, Lars Sabi Christensen, Kjell Askildsen, Johan Borgen, Dag Solstad, Herb Jerg Wasso, John Foss, Hans Herb Jerns Rudd, Jan Erik Vold, Roy Jacobsen, Bergeljot Hobike Half, Hans E. Kink, Olaf H. Hogg, Rolf Jacobsen, Gunver Hoffmo, Arnulf Verland, Sigbjörn Obstfelder, Olaf Bull, Osmond Olavsson Vinge, Tor Ulven, Torborg, Nedrias, Steinmurin, Jan Kagerstad, George Johannesson, Christopher Updal, Aslog Vat, Haldis Morin Vassas, Sigurd Hole, Johann Fockberget, Hans Broly, and Axel Jensen. The literature in the first years after the Second World War was characterized by a long series of documentary reports from people who had been in German custody, or who had participated in the resistance efforts during the occupation. The most famous among these were Lisa Brassum's S. Fangi Ravensbrück, Odd Nansen S. Fradag Tildag and the posthumously published Petter Mons Dabach. Some years later, Biographies of Heroes of Resistance, such as Fridjof Sjælland S. Shetlands Larsen, about Leif Andreas Larsen, and David Armin Howarth's N. I Live. Historien O. M. Jan Bailey's Rudd, became major publishing successes. Fiction of the period also centered on the war. Sigurd Evans Mo S. England's Ferry about a group of resistance fighters who are captured. Tarji Ivasas symbolically addressed the war experience in Huset Imerkrit. A significant portion of the post-war literature was concerned with the question of why some remained good Norwegian patriots while others, seemingly ordinary people, served the enemy. Examples of this include Sigurd Hol SMTVED Mileplan from 1947, Kair Holt S. Detstor Vaskillet from 1949 and Axel Sandy Mose S. Varelvin from 1958, which provide psychological explanations for collaboration. Poetry written during the war, which had either been broadcast from London or had circulated illegally, 
was published as collections in the spring of 1945, and enjoyed a popularity that Norwegian poetry has not seen before or since. In particular Arnulf Verland S. 6 over Lever Alt and Nordal Grieg's Freihutten were well received. Some of those who were young during the war found that the traditional lyrical forms were insufficient to express horrors of war, atomic bombs, and the emerging Cold War. Gunver Hoffmo, who was personally affected by the war, came with the remarkable collections Jeg Vilhshem Til Menskine and Fra and Annen Verkelia. Modernism appeared on a broad front in the Norwegian poetry of the 1950s. It impacted the lyrics produced by Tarji Ivasas, Ernst Orville, Astrid Tollefsen, and Olav H. Hogg. Among the younger poets, such as Astrid Hirdenes Andersen, Paul Breck, Hans Broly, Harold Sverdrup, and Marie Takvam, free verse was the preferred form. Paul Breck was modernism's foremost advocate against traditionalists such as Arnulf Verland and Andre Björk in a wide-ranging debate about poetic forms which is recognized as the speaking in tongues debate. George Johannesson's first publication Dict in 1959 introduced a new interest in political and social values, that had not been particularly evident in the 1950s. At the same time, the well-established poet, Rolf Jacobson, espoused a more critical attitude to the consumer mentality and environmental destruction. In prose, first and foremost it was Jens Bjernabo who led the attack on the establishment in the 1950s. In Jonas and Den Ond Hired he attacks the school and prison systems, arguing that there the government shows its authoritarian aspects particularly clearly. One of the highlights of 1950s prose literature is Johann Borgen's Lille Lord trilogy. Borgen work is characterized by an experimental prose writing style, which can be seen in several short story collections as well as the experimental novel Jeg from 1959. Another highlight of 1950s literature was two controversial novels by Agner Mikkel S. about Ask Berlfot, Lasso Rund Fru Luna and Songen Om Den Rde Rubin. But as a result of legal intervention against the latter book, the pressure of the court case and surrounding controversy left Mikkel a reclusive who published little thereafter. Axel Jensen was another fresh, new voice in the 1950s. In his debut novels Icaros and Line the young protagonist comes to terms with non-socialistic members of the social democratic welfare state. Jensen also introduced a new theme in Norwegian literature with the publication of Ep in 1965, this novel dealt with a future dystopia. Besides Johan Borgen, Tarji Ivasas, and Torborg Nedrias also achieved recognition as excellent short story writers. In 1953, Kjell Askeltsen debuted with the short story collection Heritor Floger Jeg Deg Heldhjem. He has since remained at short prose genre, and is today considered one of Norwegian literature's finest short story writers. The period after 1965 represented a sharp expansion of market for Norwegian fiction. In 1965, Norway instituted a policy for purchasing new literature. The state committed to purchase 1,000 copies of each new title of Norwegian literature. These were distributed among the country's libraries. This combined with the creation of the book club Buklub and Nyker in 1976 produced increased vitality in the country's literary production. The 1970s produced both politicization and empowerment of Norwegian authors as a group as well as intellectuals in general. The Norwegian Authors' Union became an arena for political struggle as well as the struggle for academic authors' rights. At one point the Authors' Union split into two camps, 
Around the country the authors organized themselves in the regional authors' organizations, and started a number of literary journals, in which contributions by amateur writers were welcomed. Profile would eventually become the most notable literary magazine. From 1965, it published the work of a number of young writers who would put their distinct mark on the literature of the period. The profile goal was to bring Norwegian literature abreast of European literature in general. To achieve this, they rebelled against the traditional psychological novel development. The question of the true identify for the modern state was core. Dag Solstad contributed significantly to this late 1960s figure's modernism through his articles, essays, and literary works. Poetry already exhibited a modernist style, which was prevalent through the 1950s and early 1960s. Traditionalists who still wrote in fixed stanza forms were out of favor. The younger poets targeted replacing the 1950s style symbolism, and Jan Erik Vold was at the forefront of this insurgency. Profile poetry introduced a new simplicity, concretism, and use of everyday language. Paul Breck was particularly noted for promoting modern European poetry, both as poet and critic. He argued for a renewal of Norwegian poetry and spread knowledge of foreign literature through translations of English modernist writers like T.S. Eliot. In the mid-1950s, Breck participated in the debate on lyrical form, and opposed Andre Björk and Arnulf Verland in the so-called Glossolalia debate. Among the established lyrists, Olav H. Hogg transitioned to modernistic and concretist poetry and enjoyed a renaissance especially with his collection entitled Dropar in Ostavind, which inspired other, younger Norwegian poets, such as Jan Erik Vold. After a short period the profile group went separate routes, as authors such as Dag Solstad, Aspen Havardshalm, and Tor Abrastad turned to the newly formed Party Workers' Communist Party and become involved in formulating a new political program that based on the view that literature should serve the working people and their uprising against capitalism. Aroldisten Solstad's 1970 is a key novel to understanding the desire of the modern intellectual to connect with something larger and more realistic the working people and a cause. There were few AKP authors yet they managed to set a major part of the agenda for Norwegian fiction through much of the 1970s. Some authors began to write novels and poems in a language targeted so that people could recognize themselves, often known as social realism literature. Well-known works in this genre include Solstad's 25. September Plassen, Abrestad's Sauda. Strake and Havard Shalm's historian's craft linger. Even though a minority wrote AKP-themed literature, there was a general willingness of the larger community of authors to support this literary focus. Besides the class struggle, there were two areas that were subject of serious literature, feminism and the struggle against the concentration of governmental power into a centralized government. The term feminist literature or woman's literature was shifting during this period. While some believed that a special term for literature written for women by women about women's experiences were necessary, others were concerned that feminist literature served to place the female writers and readers outside the community, in an isolated cycle. Notwithstanding the debate, important contributions came from new, female authors about women unsatisfactory role in the family and in society. Liv Kltsau s Hvem best emmer over Liv Aguni? Is central to understanding the new woman's literature. BJRG Vic contributed a long series of short story collections and the play to actor for Fem Kvinner. <laughs>
both Kultsawes and Vick's work stayed with the realistic tradition. Later Cecilia Lvade and Eldred London created work with a more rebellious language representing a fresh genre of experimental work. Lvade's work is notably committed to finding a new language for a new female role. The decade of the 1980s was in many ways a response to the social realism in 1970s literature. In 1983, Kai Skagen published a polemical philosophical treatise titled Bazarav's Barn, which reconciled the role of authors who had been on the periphery in the 1970s. Skagen advocated for a more individual-oriented and idealistic literature. Although it is uncertain whether this book created or simplify reflected the transition, many of the 1970s authors shifted in new directions during the 1980s. Dag Solstad published two novels which were retrospectives on the Workers' Communist Party. Aspen Havardshalm wrote a novel titled Drift and Edvard Hoem authored Pervited. All these works focused on middle-aged men who live through the crises of life, while struggling to find new footing. Similarly Nut Faldbachen's novels about the change of men's roles during the women's revolution in the 1970s reflected the new direction. The 1980s generated several major novels that develop a main theme over decades, are centered on a strong central character person and are built around rural milieu or a local community of a not-too-distant past. Examples include Lars Sabi Christensen's Beatles, Tove Nilsson's Skyscraper Ingler, Ingvar Amoyernsen's Havite Niggery, Gerd Brandt Enberg's St. Croix Trilogy, Herb Jairguasso's Torah Trilogy and Roy Jacobson's C.A. Herine. The 1980s have also been labeled the fantasy decade in Norwegian literature. A number of authors, including K. Jarden Flokstad, Mari Osmundsen, Hans Herb Jernsrud, Arald Nyquist, Jan Kagerstad, and Ragnar Hovland produced works with magical, fantastic or improbable elements. Literature written for children and young people also included fantastic elements, Tormod Haugen is the most notable contributor to this genre. A large number of 1980s authors displayed a high degree of literary consciousness. Many of the new authors in this decade were formally educated in literature, philosophy and other academic subjects at the many schools or institutes for writers established throughout Norway. Many novels generated internal conflicts with the text itself or with other texts, and the protagonists was represented as a writer, scientist, or artist. Jan Kagerstad's Homo Falsus is perhaps the foremost of these 1980s metanovels, Karin Mo Skyka slash 1984 another. O.L.E. Robert Sundy and Liv Nisted also produced works in this genre. Another consequence of more academically oriented authors was the large number of essay collections published in recent years, these often provide an author's interpretations of other authors or reflections on other forms of art. The period showed a rising interest in crime literature. John Michelat, Gunnar Stalizen, Kim Smidge, and Frederick Skagen all were well appreciated by Norwegian readers. In the 1990s female crime writers such as Karin Fossum and Anne Holt had great success the latter's works featured a female investigator. Interest in crime has in no way decreased since the turn of the millennium, and a number of writers have either specialized in crime or have alternated between crime and other prose. Joe Nesib, Kurt Ost, Uni Lindell, Tom Edgeland, Tom Christensen, J.R.N. Lyre Horst, Stein Morton Lyre and Kiel Ola Dahl are among the authors in this category. A stream of translated crime, especially from Sweden and Britain, have influenced Norwegian authors of this genre. Another clear trend is an interest in biographies, especially of authors and artists. <laughs>
Many of the significant living writers during the 1980s have written one or more biographies of deceased artists or other colleagues. In addition, several significant biographies were written. The Fall of the Sun God Nut Homsen by Jerjen Hagen and Inger Sletten Colon S. Nut Homsen biography received great attention. There is a trend in these modern biographies similar to today's cinema and unlike the past to use source material of a private character. In poetry Rolf Jacobson S. Natapant sold almost 20,000 copies and Harold Sverdrup S. Lysets Yeblik was also very well received. Stein Murren, Tor Ulven, and Paul Helge Haugen also published significant collections of poetry during this decade. Jan Eric Vold wrote some of his most political poetry, reminiscent of the 1970s, during the 1990s. The new and emerging poetry shows great diversity. However, only the rare collection of poetry achieves substantial sales or circulation. Poetry can be said to be in a crisis state, unlike newer novels, which often are published in large quantities as the month's book for book clubs. Theatre audiences show only moderate interest in new Norwegian plays. Hence drama has been overshadowed by prose and poetry, with one exception, John Foss. Foss, through the 1990s and later, has achieved an international acclaim not enjoyed by any other Norwegian playwright since Ibsen.